Hello, and welcome to episode 80 of my Terraria Calamity mod playthrough. More testing of weapons today. So the plan will be that we will go through the summoner items in this chest that we can craft. We'll give them all a test, um, and then we'll fight Calamitous with um, whatever build we end up with. Um, with regards to items that we had last time, we are going to put away Calamity. Um, that's the thing that changes our cursor. Um, the reason being, damage is the only thing it does. Um, the vulnerability hex is just a damage over or a dot that I think does like a thousand odd damage per second. So it's not um, nothing, but compared to the amount of damage we do in total, um, it's not worth keeping. Um, it's supposed to do like 6,000 damage base, or at least that's what the wiki says, but we was only getting 4,500, 4, but either way, if all it is is damage, then it's not worth using an accessory slot for. So that's going to go away. Uh, we're also going to put away the Cinders of Lament. This is the one that summon, um, ah, summons Cataclysm and Catastrophe, just because be or hitting with this thing is going to be a pain in the ass. Um... And it also is going to force us to make movements that are not related to what the boss is doing. And that, again, puts us at a massive disadvantage. So they will go away. We may keep metasta metastasis. Ah, metastasis. Um, we'll see how it compares to the other things that we'll get. But yeah, we'll test the new summoned weapons once we've crafted them. We'll fight Calamitous to get the... Um, or her drop so that we can hopefully, I don't know whether or not we'll have enough, but we will see if we can get enough. Um, hopefully so that we can get the Demon Shade uh, armor set, uh, which I think needs over 30. That's 30, yeah, we need 45. So as long as we just stick initially to the uh, crafting the summoner gear, then touch wood one more kill of Calamitous should get us enough to make the armor as well. And then we'll see where we go from there. So let's just craft all of them. And grab the items in here. If I really need to grab the items in here, we can actually reach this from here. So, first things first. There's the Angelic Alliance. Let's grab that. And then we have three summon items. Ah, good, they are in order. So one of these, I have half an idea what it does, and that's this one here. Um, reason being, um, I can't remember, it was one of the items in it that I must have looked through, and I eventually ended up clicking on the page for this item. Um, so I know what it summons. I don't know the details of it. But let's just grab all three. Or four. There we go, that leaves us with 12 plus another hopefully 45, uh, 35 from another kill. That should be enough for the armor. Okay, let's get these upgraded. One second, I'll be right back. Okay, we've pre grabbed our armor set that doesn't have the um, extra minions sitting above us so that we can. Do these tests properly. Uh, that's not the button I was looking for. There we go. Okay, so first things first. The Warden Angelic Alliance. Call upon the forces of heaven to empower your attacks and minions. Courage, enlightenment, bliss, united in judgment. Um, this synergizes with um, the Profane Soul Crystal in that it also adds... Um, an additional, oh yeah, all minions inflict banishing fire. It makes all attacks um, from the Profane Soul Crystal um, also inflict ban um, ba uh, banishing fire. Uh, plus two minions, 15 increase, uh, increase to um, summon damage, 8% increase to all other classes, uh, 2 HP per second life regeneration, Press G to grace yourself with divinity for tw uh, 15 seconds while under the effects of um, divine blessing. For every minion you have, an archangel shall be summoned to aid you in comment. Each spawned minion will instantly heal you for two health. 
all minions in um, all minions attacks inflict burnish and fire and you are granted a flat health boost uh, of four per second uh, this effect has a one uh, cooldown of one minute this I think just directly replaces the dark sun ring at least in a minute um, we may eventually swap out mm, probably the soul artifact with it if we want the more minion slots I don't think we're ever going to remove Shattered Community and this also provides a lot of decent buffs so it might not be worth getting rid of. But yeah, for the time being we're going to straight up replace the Dark Sun Ring with it. Uh, let's change over our armor set and remove these. Dark Sun Ring away. Okay, so we only have 10 minion slots at the minute. Actually, let's um, get the Dark Sun Ring out again temporarily, just for the excuse me, just for the extra minion slots. Um, slight increase in damage, but we'll be comparing everything against everything else, so that's not too much of a problem. Okay, so the special effect of this is useless unless we have minions out already. So that's fine. So let's swap these in. And that minion's there. Okay. Endogenesis. This one was made. Um, where are you? Uh, using the cryogenic staff and the blizzard staff. So this one is the um, dragon head summon, um, I think. Or is that a different one? That may have been a different one. Animated construct to protect you. No, this is a different one. This is a one we've had for ages. Um, we must have upgraded the other one with something else. Yeah, okay, never mind. Uh, I thought this was the upgrade to the um, dragon head that you get from the dungeon, but no. Okay. Summons an ascended ice construct to protect you. Um, charges attack or changes attack mode by resummoning or reusing the staff. The first mode makes it shoots a sweeping laser aimed at the enemy. The second mode sacrifices its limbs to shoot out home projectiles. The third mode allows it to aggressively tackle its enemies. The fourth mode makes the ice slings function as endothermic flamethrowers. Requires 10 minion slots, there can only be one construct at a time. So mode 1 is doing 15,000 damage. Mode 2 is a little bit harder to tell for sure. It appears to be around 30k damage, if not more, but... Again, that's, it's hard to say because it's not consistent and I don't know how this damage per second um, measure tracks things that aren't being fired constantly. Direct attack. About 20k. Yeah, call it about 20k and the fourth mode. less but it's covering a larger area so it depends upon um, really what we are using it against the different modes of different effects for example this is going to be really good against the multi-send magnitude boss because these are piercing so um, that'll be that so this is um, potentially good against slow moving targets that might be good against fast moving single targets and then this is going to be good against um, or when there's a lot of targets. Okay. Okay, next up. This is the one that we know what the thing looks like. I don't know specifically what it's um, going to do. Summons a colossal, con a colossal controllable mech. Right click to display the mech's control panel. Um... This panel has three configurations, selected using the brackets on the edge of the UI. Each bracket powers 
two out of three possible functions represented by the circular icons. The bottom left icon miniaturizes the mech uh, to the size of the player, but weakens its weapons. The bottom right icon is powerful jet boosts, which greatly enhances movement. Top right, uh, the top icon is the mech's weaponry. It must be powered in order to attack. Click the top icon to switch between regicide an enormous energy blade and a powerful gauze rifle. Exiting the mech while a boss is alive will temporarily hinder your movements. Now make them pay. Okay. Cannot deploy in sufficient space. There we go. Uh, open the control panel. So, what was that one? Powerful jet booster which greatly enhances movement. So this is another We Are The Summon. Oops. Alright, because we're casting it. Um. Okay, that's cool, but really not usable. Okay, how do we disable those then? We right click to use it, but... The panel has three configurations selected by using the brackets on the edge of the UI. Each bracket power uh, powers... Oh, I see. I see what it's saying. Um, it's these. So this makes us harder to hit, but we don't have as much maneuverability, supposedly. There's got to be a way to use that without having to click it. Top icon switches between... Bottom icon is... Uh, bottom right is a powerful jet boost which greatly improves... Alright, we couldn't click it because it wasn't powered. Now it's powered. We must have come in contact with this. So how do we use the weaponry? Um... Excuse me? Um... Uh, so th th this is a, a 168 or 170 thousand damage per second. Compared to the war, oh, the one we just had previously, that's insane. Even this thing doesn't get anywhere near that kind of level. That said, we are a bigger target. So while we do have the same amount of maneuverability, the I'm imagining all of this is our hitbox. So if we were to put this in an arena or the arena with um Calamitous then she's just going to wreck us during the um, the first bullet hell phase because we're just not going to be able to dodge it. Uh, we would have to pull up the control panel. Try to get to that. Sorry, one sec. Try to get this so that we can dodge properly to disable our weapons and then try to remember to re-enable our weapons. If I didn't have to click this, then it'd be less of a problem, I think. And we have a nice big target there that can test for us. How much of our hitbox can you hit? So... So you can hit the bottom part of it. Yeah. 
it does massively increase our hitbox. That's the um, trade-off. Here's the question. Does that ability... Okay, it stops when we hit something. I was wondering whether or not we could use it as a um, attack. Which maybe we can? No, it doesn't do any damage. It's just a way to quickly get away around. Okay. Um, what about this? Easier to hit with, but does less damage. Now, the strange thing is, is this is supposed to use... Wait, does it not? I thought this was supposed to use 10 minion slots. Can we actually use this while we have... No. Now that just doesn't seem fair. We can use this with of us minions. Um, we don't necessarily have to use the attack. We can put it into this mode because I think we actually have more maneuverability with this. Uh, let's unsummon it. No, we have about the same maneuverability. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> this seems like a bad idea. <laughs> but that's why I like the idea. Okay. 11 minion slots. Um, I mentioned in the um, or a message at the bottom of the screen when I was testing this, having sentries out did remove uh, the empowerments we get. One of the empowerments is the fact that the um, healer will attack, and the beam itself, um, the healer can only use the beam while we are under the effect of the whip. Um, guardians have been empowered by, by the whip. This lasts for 30 seconds, so you only actually have to use it every now and again. Um, but the beam will happen every 18 seconds while under the effect of the whip and it's controlled by the healer. So if you're not empowered, in other words the healer isn't attacking, then that's why it sometimes didn't do anything. But now here's the question. Uh, I accidentally put that away. I didn't mean to. This seems like it shouldn't work. It works! <laughs> we can have both active at once. And it doesn't count as a minion. Uh, if I disable the weaponry and make myself small... then I'm not attacking at all. Yeah, I can't use my normal weapons. Okay. So we can use it that way, but doing so would rem or removes our ability to use any other effects. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Um... Do we have... Let's get that. Ah. Anyway, doesn't matter. Um, take it off, put it away. Okay, interesting, interesting. Right. Uh, so that's that one. On to the next one. This. There's not really. I don't think there's a reason not to use it if we're using um, other summons. But uh, as I said, it's like. 
it's going to depend upon what boss we're fighting against as to whether or not using it as a weapon is a good idea. Um, but yeah, next up, the Temporal Umbrella. Summons a variety of tools to assist you in battle. Uh, a Vermilion Arrow to pierce your adversaries. A Malanian Hammer to bonk enemies in style. A Jade Axe to cleave monsters and occasionally fell a tree. A Cyan Umbrella to beat down your foes with grace. Uh, a Lavender Rifle to snipe those who stand in your way. Best of all, you get to wear a top hat. It requires five minion slots to use. There can only be one set of tools at a time. Okay, so that's the tree. whole bunch of extra debuffs to it as well as the occasional trees it's dropping but just from a raw damage point of view um it's not doing as much as this thing does or maybe it is It is doing slightly less damage than this. Not by much, but slightly less nonetheless. Surprisingly sturdy, I reckon this could defeat the Mafia in a single blow. I wonder what the stylish counts for. We can only have one set of them out. Do these count as five minions? Let's press the G button. Okay, we only get one of them. So it's slightly less damage, and if we're to use it with this armor, then we are much better off using this, because this is five different. Um, summons. Okay. We'll test the angelic thing um, a bit more later. Last, the universal splitter. Summons an energy field of the mouse cursor. After the field has been deployed, um, it begins to summon multiple small beams. After several seconds have passed... Jesus Christ, I just looked at how much damage this does. Um, after several seven seconds have passed, an enormous laser beam appears uh, in, at the field's position. This effect is a cooldown. Attempting to use this item during the cooldown will cause a short circuit and do damage to you. An ancient artifact uh, from a previous age. It awaits your command. This is a terrible idea. Uh, but is, but it isn't yours anyway, right? Oh, sky beams. Um, universal splitters call down. Okay, so that's two separate summon weapons that don't actually summon minions. They're just summon damaging weapons. So theoretically, we could use both at the same t uh, time. What is the highest damage in lowest minion slot requiring thing that I have other than the mirrors? I don't think I have one. I have five of these, one of these. Okay, let's see how much damage this actually does if we target properly. I suppose the problem with this is, um, Well, that is a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage on a fixed location. How much damage does it do to me if I use it while cooldown? 
That was nothing. One. Oh, it drops that weird thing on us. Okay, so that's definitely worth keeping, even if even if it misses, it's worth using. Um, and that's all of the summon now, uh, items, isn't it? So we only actually have two new summons. One of them isn't actually that good. The other one's pretty decent. It uses 10 slots. But then compared to... Um, uh, if we compare it to something else that uses 10 slots... This deals more damage. Um, oh, that's for. No, I'm thinking about this wrong. That's versus that. This thing. Okay, it's an equivalent amount of damage, but it depends upon what um, mode we're using it in. Okay. If I was to summon, say, one of these. Five of these. These are the three spot slots there. Yeah, the amount of damage we have to do to those to keep them dead is a little concerning. One, two, three, that should be six of them. They are doing damage. Yeah, I don't think this is really, um, the snaky boy is really worth it. I wonder how this works with, um, let's go a little bit. I wonder how the angel thing works with a multi-segmented summon. Um, I think the easiest place for me to find one of those is in here. Have we made it yet? There it is. Technically it's one summon summoned multiple times. Okay, that counts. That's... That seems like more than 10. Uh, do they do contact damage? No. They just do laser damage. That seems like way more than 10. We only have 12. Hmm. They didn't add that much damage. Okay. Some interesting tools here. But versus, like, just using the profane soul crystal. Most of them are not that worth it. Let's re-equip these to get our count, uh, summon count back up. This way. Okay, um, we definitely want to keep it just because it's in, it's more increased damage than this gives us. And what we should do is we should compare... Just our base damage. 18k to 20k, say. Versus... Slightly more, and we get healing from this. I 
little bit more inconsistent as well, but yeah. So we are better off keeping the Profane Soul artifact if we're not using the crystal um, than using the Dark Soul Ring. That's fine. And we have 15 slots. Moving away. Okay. This is interesting, but I don't think it's useful. I think we're much better off using the mirror. Exiting the mount or the mount while the boss is alive will temporarily hinder your movements. If we're going to use this, then we don't want it on our um, hotbar. So if we're going to use all the mins we have, then that plus that. Just to get our base damage per second. still respectable, although this is in the wrong mode. In theory, is the higher damage per second mode. And then if we were stupid enough to use this in a boss fight, Using this against Calamitous is absolutely a terrible idea. I'm not going to do that. But there are probably boss fights that we can use it with. Let me figure out what we're going to fight Calamitous with. I'm suspecting the Profane Soul Crystal um, just because it has home in attacks on it. Although this particular setup here just without the mech might be a perfectly reasonable solution. Actually, let me check something because one thing the game doesn't tell me is um, if I use that, do I get any kind of buff? Okay, we have been given a buff. You're controlling a piece of history, Andromeda. You're controlling a small piece of history. Yeah, I'm wondering whether or not we get any kind of um, defense boost or damage reduction or whether there's any other effects given by the mech. Okay, uh, let's see. The Flame Star Ring is a craftable post metal developer. Summon a weapon when used, the player turns into giant controllable robots. While mounted, most of their weapons are transformed into attacks. The type of attack is determined by the top button of the interface, um, which is summoned by right-clicking while the item is held. Not true, right-clicking at any point. Um, the crescent symbols spawn a massive slash uh, from the bot, which we know hits all targets in the area, 5,200 damage. The crosshair symbol uh, fires a set of three lasers, which deal 4,200 damage uh, and pierce infinitely, or infinite enemies. The player can transform into a player-sized version of the bot by clicking the left bracket. Um, which can be transformed back into the large version by clicking the right bracket. While in transformation, certain tools such as grappling hook are enabled. 
certain tools such as grappling hook are enabled and the slash damage is lowered. And the amount of lasers per fire is reduced to one. Clicking the bottom right button turns the player into a lightning jet, which is controlled by the cursor, which can force the player back upon tire collision. Left clicking with the flame signal while it dismounts. If the user dismounts while the boss is alive, they'll gain uh, Andromeda Cripple debuff, crippling their movement, disabling the use of the item for the duration of the debuff. Modifier is ruthless. So it doesn't appear to give us any kind of defense, but that is something that I kind of overlooked. Um, I overlooked the fact that um, I can be small than attack. This interface is not exactly the best. Okay, so we can use it. This uh, this probably would be our setup then. We can use it against um, an enemy like Calamitous. So let's do that. Um, okay. We're going to get rid of that because this is better. Um, right, let me just sort all of this stuff out. Uh, get some potions ready and get ready to fight Calamitous again. So, one moment, please. Okay, I think we are ready. Sorted out how I have everything laid up, uh, yeah, laid out up here. Um, the plan will be we will use... I have a lost it. There we go. This one. Um, I assume that's in the last mode we set it to. I'm not sure. Is there a way to tell what mode it's in? Nope. And then we'll have five of these. Uh, there's no point us getting a sixth one. We'd have to use a, uh, another minion slot. Uh, we will activate this here. Change modes. Set it to melee. I don't know what mode I left that on now. Okay, good. So that's been replaced. We can swap over if we want to. Not sure whether. Oops. Didn't mean to summon that. Never mind. Um, I'm not sure whether or not melee or ranged is going to be the best option here. We'll have to see. Um, yeah, let's come over here, pop our buffs, and let Calamitous kill us some more. out of range of this weapon. And I just ate loads of extra damage from that.
Because they are just outside of the weapons range of this. Okay, so we can't use the melee weapon. Fair enough. Uh, and we need to be a little bit more careful about how we're using... Um, which items we're using when. I also don't know what mode this thing was in. I only really want it to be in one mode for this fight. Um, let's let anything appear. Are they not allowed to appear because calamities stand nearby? Any enemies at all? That's the right mode. Got a catastrophe trophy. We did actually kill one of them. I don't know how we managed to do that, but I'll take the win. Come on, any enemy at all. I need to know what mode this is in. I can't be paying attention to the mode this is in in the middle of the fight. Okay, that's fine when it shards off, good. That's the mode we want it in. Right, um, then we want one, two, three, four, five. Let's get up on the top so that it doesn't complain about space. Summon the mech. Let's put you in this mode. Um, we're not likely gonna be able to whip her. not easily. needed to move to avoid that thing. Let's heal from that. Okay, we all basically phase skip that, that's fine. we go. She almost got us. Uh, I believe she actually has new things to say. We've missed the first or oh, the first few lines. Your skill hasn't folded in the least. Isn't this exciting? Uh, here comes the crawling tomb. Last uh, one last time. So yeah there's a whole we've missed a whole bunch of these. Um, if you're watching on 21 by 9 I'll make sure that during that fight I pull them up. Um, I'm going to have to look back at the video uh, recording. Uh, I can see the match to you. Uh, no doubt you will face enemies stronger than I. I trust you will not make the same mistake he did. I, can Im uh, I can't imagine what your future holds now. 
Okay. Well, she does have one summon item that we do want off her, and we did that entire fight without buffs because apparently we missed the button. Either that fight or the fight before. No, we definitely used them on the bus fight before, so we did that without buffs. Good to know. Still not something I necessarily want to do, uh, uh, replicate. Ooh, we got her trophy as well. I don't know what we're going to do with the trophy for Catastrophe. I'm guessing that just will have to go here. It can go away. Let's see. Okay, we only got a weapon out of it. We did not get much. Um, I feel like... We got that already, but I also feel like we didn't. It'll be in here if we did. No, we got the um, vehement. Okay, so that one's a new weapon. We'll worry about that next time while we're testing these weapons. Um, that can be sold, that can be sold. Let's make more Shadow Spec bars. Hopefully. Oh, are we one short? No, we've got enough. I think. Do we have enough? Yeah, we're one short. That's 30. That's another... Um... Oh, we're one short because of Exomex. Okay. We're one short because we didn't have enough from Exomex. That being the case... Uh, sell those. Let's fight the next Exomex with this build. Um, do I want to... Actually, I do want to buff up. Let's actually do this with applicable buffs. We also entirely forgot about or to use our G key. Um, oh, this is going to... Oh, the, the Exomex are going to hate this. Because the Exomex are literally something I can summon this clean on top of. Okay, um, we have all our minions out. We've been forgetting to use our sentries, God damn it! Forgetting to use everything. Um, I'm inclined... this is... this is suicidal. I'm inclined... for the shits and the giggles. Mechs versus mechs. Um, this is totally going to get us killed. Uh, where's our grave? We did die once. There it is. Oh, we can't mine with this out. I don't think... It's not giving us the debuff because we're in the middle of summoning the boss. We haven't actually summoned the boss. Okay. Everything ready? I have to pay a little bit more attention to what that one's doing, but... Oh, we must have taken way more damage than I thought we did because our invulnerability wasn't back yet. I was counting on my invulnerability or the invulnerability to um, save me from that. We didn't use the buffs again. <laughs> we once again failed to use the buffs. Okay, that was still our mistake. Not because we failed to use the buffs. Um, 
And I was also kind of still treating myself as this tiny target that we usually are, so... I think we must have killed one of them. Because there was health drops. Weird. <laughs> okay. Um, summon. Again, I don't know what mode you're in. You appear to be in charge mode, so... Puts you in spiral mode. Puts you in beam mode. Let's leave you in beam mode. Because there is a, um... An enemy that that will do a lot of damage to. Ah, maybe, um... Yeah, I was still, like, treating this as my hitbox rather than the entire thing. It's perfectly possible that... Um, the first enemy. God damn it. One, two, three. Swap over to that weapon so we can't do that again. The click hitbox for that is not great. Big. Summon that. Activate that. Activate this. Hey, Ares is dead. <laughs> oh, there we go, they're all dead. He survived! He hasn't been killed by something! And there he goes. So yeah, that's really good if you want to just absolutely nuke a boss. But you have to be able to actually survive the incoming damage as well, which is easier said than done. I think that's what happened. Um, I was being hit by things that ordinarily would have missed, so I was assuming they did. And because my health is obviously way off screen, I just wasn't paying attention. Um, we forgot to use the buffs again! The buffs are important, they give us our defence. Okay, one second while I um, clean up my inventory and then we will craft and quickly test the armor and then we'll call it a day. So, one moment please. Okay, that's our inventory sorted out. Now, let's craft the armor. Okay, Demon Shade. Increases damage, increases critical hit chance, increases melee speed, increases damage and critical hit chance. Enemies take an ungodly amount of damage if they touch you, increases maximum life and mana by 200. Standing still absorbs shadows, um, grants exponentially accelerating life regeneration, shadow speed. This is effectively universal armor and that definitely feels faster. Then still absorb shadows and grants exponentially accelerating life regeneration. Okay. So, the set bonuses. This is where the fun stuff starts. 100% increase to summon damage and plus 10 max minions. Shadow beams and demon size will fire down when you are hit. A friendly red devil follows you around. Press Y to enrage nearby enemies um, with dark magic spells for 10 seconds. This makes them take 2.8. Two five times damage, but they will deal 1.25 damage to you. We now have 19 minion slots. We are one short of 20. Um, that means we can get 20 now. Hmm. 
Oh, we don't have the Stardust Dragon anymore, do we? Can I borrow one of you? And we don't have the Tiger any uh, either. How did through your? How did they get in there? Extra copies. Oh yeah, we've got to spare one of these. Uh, let me just get rid of... Where are you? Yes. We now have 20 of them. Um, what else be interesting to have 20 of? Uh, it's still on summon mode. There's the Tiger Staff. That's the Cell Staff. What would it take to make another one of those Dragon Staffs? I don't know. For the time being, that movement speed is going to take a little bit of getting used to. We can just use this one instead. So this isn't going to do much damage because this is a much lower tier weapon. That's 20 of them attacking there. It's not nothing in terms of damage, but still. I think most of the damage is probably being done by this minion here, rather than anything else. So let's actually use something that is going to do some amount of actual damage. There we go. Now we have some numbers. Are we sure there's 20 of them? I'm not entirely sure. Okay, we'll put this armor... Fucking hell! Why the massive sudden increase in damage? That's 20,000! All of that ca or all of that extra damage came from those additional um, things. And there's the extra enrage damage. Uh, here's a question: We have now used rage. Have, have we leveled this up? Okay, we've leveled it up five times. Good to know. Okay, we will leave it there for today. Uh, we'll be back on Friday where we will try to craft the remainder. I don't know whether or not we'll get through them because we've been spending a lot of time playing with each of these weapons because they're all interesting. So hopefully we'll get through them all. We are going to have to kill Calamitous again. We're going to have to kill the XMX again. So we'll see what builds we have when we decide to go and do that. But for now, um, that's a good point. Um, This doesn't actually give any rogue benefits. Because it doesn't give us a... Um... Oh, you are attacking. Uh, it doesn't give us a... Um... Watch my thingy bar. A stealth bar. Which means, as far as the rogue is concerned, this is still the best armor they can use. As far as the summoner is concerned, this is definitely the best armor we can use now. But anyway, yeah, we will leave it there for today. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back again on Friday with more of this. So hopefully we'll see you next time. Cheerio.